Hi, I'm Jonathan Loyalis, Director of Shenandoah University's McCormick Civil War Institute. This morning, I'm coming to you from the virtual Battle of Berryville Battlefield, which was the scene of arguably one of the lesser known engagements fought in the Shenandoah Valley during the conflict. The Battle of Berryville was fought on September 3rd, 1864, and it pitted elements of Union General George Crook's Eighth Corps, which was part of Philip Sheridan's Army of the Shenandoah, against a Confederate division commanded by Lieutenant General Richard Anderson, which was attached to Jubal Early's Army of the Valley. The battle was predominantly fought on the west side of Berryville. It began late on the afternoon of September 3rd. The fighting carried on through evening into nightfall. And ultimately what ended uh, the nighttime fighting was a drenching downpour. After it was all said and done, there were approximately 400 combined Union and Confederate casualties. That night, George Crook pulled his command back east of Berryville and established camps. And it was from those camps that night that Corporal Robert Bradbury, Battery D, 1st Pennsylvania Light Artillery, penned a letter to his sister Harriet describing the fighting of the Battle of Berryville. And he wrote in part, while halting at Berryville in the afternoon, they made a desperate dash on us, coming so suddenly that we hardly time to prepare for them. Things at one time looked bad enough for our side. The rebels came on yelling like boys just out of school, but the gap was soon filled up. Most of our infantry behaving nobly, and the way we poured the shell into them was a caution to both rats and rebs. After dark, a battery of theirs opened up and we replied to it. The musketry began very rapidly. Some of their shells burst pretty close to us, and we could hear the musket balls cutting through the trees near us and whizzing by us. And as Bradbury went on in this letter to his sister Harriet, he also wrote uh, about the weather and how, at, uh, how it impacted um, the engagement as well. So this little excerpt again kind of illustrates the richness of Corporal Bradbury's letters and you of course can read any of these letters in our book, So Much to Say which was recently published by the McCormick Civil War Institute. So I wanna thank you all for tuning in this morning and I look forward to seeing you in a few days when we continue our virtual site visits all over the Shenandoah Valley. Thank you.